stay in that time and talk to us about Reagan. Sure. And then talk, and then go right into Bush. <laughs> why, they're, why they're two very critical figures in studying um, harassment of black elected officials. Sure. Reagan and Bush are, are fascinating primarily because of who they appointed to the Justice Department. Uh, because, you know, they, they, they tried to sort of um, uh, disassemble much of the federal government. Uh, but the one place that they, they really are successful is for, not, pardon me, not disassemble, but try to change it from liberal to conservative. Mm -hmm. um, and the one place where they're remarkably successful is at the Justice Department. It's one of the few places where they really are able to do it. Mm -hmm. And they're able to put people in office like Rudy Giuliani, mm -hmm. um, Jefferson Sessions, who's now the ranking Republican on the Senate Judiciary Committee, uh, and many others. Uh, Bob Barr, who was a congressman from Georgia. Um, and these folks are young, they're ambitious, they're ideologically conservative, and they honestly believe that Democratic cities in particular, but in certain cases just heavily Democratic counties, have tremendous amounts of corruption and if they just go look for it, they'll find it. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you see in, in those instances is that U.S. attorneys across the country in the mid-80s uh, and then uh, in increased numbers in the late 80s and early 90s under Bush um, just start invest huge investigations. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an investigation in Kentucky where a tenth of the state legislature is indicted. That's crazy. All right? South Carolina, same thing, a tenth. Right? And so you're talking about investigations that are so large that they destabilize state governments. Mm -hmm. right? um, and black elected officials are, in almost every instance, disproportionately represented among those who are investigated uh, and sometimes indicted. Uh, and so, so you know, that's why Reagan and Bush are so important, because they start this, what I call, official corruption crackdown. Uh, but many of their U.S. attorneys, who they had named, use the official corruption crackdown in uh, racial and partisan ways that benefit the Republican Party. Yeah. So then this leads into white backlash, the feeling and the animosity that was created post-civil rights that enabled Reagan and Bush mm -hmm. to take on the power position that they did. And then go into how that affected or caused the Republicans to rise. Sure, sure. So the backstory of post-civil rights U.S. history is the massive movement of African Americans into the Democratic Party. I mean, before 1969, a majority of African Americans are not registered to vote. Mm -hmm. The Voting Rights Act makes that possible. Yes. And the places where they're able to register in huge numbers are traditionally Democratic areas, the Black Belt South, the big cities. Mm -hmm. When they move into, uh, these, uh, into the Democratic Party and even are able to take over certain parts of it, um, large numbers of white Democrats, racially conservative Democrats, leave the Democratic Party and they head into the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there's other ways in which this happens. You know, the rise of the suburbs has a great deal to do with the, the rise of the Republican Party. But if we're just looking at the racial angle, that's what occurs. Um, those Reagan Democrats, or Wallace Democrats, as they've been called at different points in time, become really the base of the Republican Party today. I mean, that's why the South is the base of the Republican Party today. It used to be the base of the Democratic Party. Um, the only people that vote Democrat uh, in the South today are black folks, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's why, you know, Barack Obama wins the entire South, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it do he doesn't win any of those states in the general election. He only wins them in the primary. Right. Um, uh, and so you can see how the movement of black folks into the Democratic Party pushes huge numbers of racially conservative whites out and they go join the Republican Party. And in the years, roughly since 1980, they have slowly become the most prominent part and the base of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's the transformation that's sort of the backstory for this book. Um, the question I wanted to add on top of that was, well, these people who dislike each other so much, do they ever use the government to attack each other, mm -hmm. right? And, that, and I was able to find that, that at times they did. 